Well, as you can see, we're kind of having a little shitty day here. Um, it sounds like it's raining harder than it actually is. It's actually just a sprinkle. I mean, well, it's a little more than a sprinkle, but it's not like a super heavy rain. We needed a rain like this. It just didn't need to be 50 degrees. I'd feel bad about it, except everybody and their brother's been planting and if they're gonna if i have to replant they're gonna have to replant too so eh, screw it but the ground was far from saturated and it wasn't overly cold to begin with so corn's pretty resilient i guess you'd say um as far as cold germ and we're supposed to we got today tomorrow and tuesday and then we're back up into the 60s and we're into the 70s by next weekend so this little bit of rain we're getting today right as of right now we were i just checked my rain gauge at my house and we are right at a half inch so we don't even have that much rain for how dry we were and you drive around you look at the ground it's really it's taking it real good so we get this little bit of rain and then we start getting the the warm days where they're talking and that that stuff's gonna giddy up and go hopefully so as long as it's not waterlogged that corn seed will just kind of sit there in the ground and twiddle its thumbs and read a magazine until the ground warms up and then it'll say okay it's time to go and then it'll take off and go and It'll survive a frost up until about V6 because um, up until that point, the growing point, which is called the apical meristem or apical meristem, depending on how you pronounce it. I've heard it both ways. Um, the correct term is apical meristem. But uh, up until V6, it's still in the ground. And as long as you don't kill that growing point, corn can survive a frost, it can survive hail it's corn's a pretty resilient plant for the most part it just doesn't like getting flooded out that's when you get screwed but we got lucky south of here they had snow and they were getting snow west or east of here right now but we haven't had the snow it's just been rain so like i say nothing's out of well for the most part nothing's out of the ground i know several guys have some soybeans out of the ground and they're not gonna be all that happy because if soybeans get bit, you're pretty much done. They'll, I've seen them snap out of it, but they're, you don't have nearly as good of a fighting chance with cold beans as you do cold corn. They'll do it, they just don't like it. So anyway, on to the project at hand. Because it's such a shitty day, and because it's been needing to get done anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get the radiator yanked out of this thing today. And possibly get it down to the radiator shop tomorrow afternoon we'll see i'm not in too big of a hurry for it but i wanted to get it done because normally for father's day um our local chapter the american truck historical society has a little father's day truck show at the heston steam museum and just out of curiosity i was looking i was looking on heston's website and I couldn't find anything about it for this year. And I was looking on the ATHS page and I couldn't find anything about it for this year. So, cause they had to cancel it last year due to COVID. And if it's canceled this year due to COVID, I'm gonna frankly be kind of pissed cause I'm tired, of just, I'm tired of this shit getting canceled due to COVID. It's out fucking side. COVID's a joke anyway, but that's neither here nor there. So anyhow, um, yeah, I was up here earlier because I didn't know if this was going to be too much of a project to take on as shitty as it is outside, but it's really not that bad. It looks like all I got to do is take these truss rods off, pull the top off the core support, obviously unhook the hoses, and then it appears that the radiator just slides out the top. So obviously get the fan trot out of the way, and I got to drain it, which this thing, hold on, I need to grab a light so you can see. You can tell this truck was designed 
back when automotive engineers didn't have their heads so far up their ass they couldn't see the light of day this has actually got a radiator drain that's that's handy this was back when they they automotive engineers thought hey you know we might actually you know on occasion have a call to service the cooling system on these things and we might need a way you know to get the antifreeze out of there that doesn't involve just yanking the lower radiator hose and hoping you have a big enough bucket to to, to catch everything because you know this is back when shit was built by people that knew how to work on things unlike today where you have a bunch of college educated idiots that never turned a wrench in their life but decided they wanted to be an engineer because they like fucking around on computers i literally okay short story time obviously i went to purdue purdue ag engineering that's their two big things or ag and engineering and ag engineering those are their big things so we were i can't even remember what the hell we were doing i can't right i think i was i know i was in my my introductory english class my freshman year why it came up in my introductory english class i don't know but i had an argument with this engineering student because i said if you have never even owned an erector set or a set of legos in your lifetime you have no business being an engineer and then he said what does that have to do with anything i said because you can't design anything that's meant to be worked on if you if you've never held a fucking wrench in your life you do not need to be a damn engineer and part of your rite of passage to be an engineer in my mind you should have to design something and then build it and maintain it yourself before you're allowed to be an engineer so you can see every spot where you fucked up but anyway that's my little rant on engineers for today so i got me a bucket and a little piece of hose and i'm gonna get the radiator draining and we will get all the peripheral bullshit taken off the top while we're while we're waiting on that and i can't see this taking much more than maybe 35 40 minutes there's really not that much to it as long as everything comes apart okay so okay i think you can see everything fairly decent from up there that's the best spot i can see to put the camera where you're out of my way and i'm out of your way This truck's got the damn tilt hood, Dad. This is a 77, Dad's is a 76. And mine's got the tilt hood, his has got the alligator hood. This truck, you can get in here to work on everything. His truck has got plenty of room in there, but you gotta go over the front for everything. It just kinda sucks.
been many moons since any of this stuff's been apart. Probably safe to say that the radiator hadn't been out of this thing since it was put in in 1977. This thing doesn't go flipping off the truck when you uh, when you take them truss rods off. Trying to figure out what holds the door support. something to kind of help support that hood because all it's got is like looks like let's crawl underneath it see it looks like there's only one or two bolts in the bottom of the core support and these guys just hold the whole thing from flipping off the front of the truck so before we break something okay now we're in better shape Dandy 55 gallon drum and a couple 4x4s took care of that problem. At this point, might as well undo the radiator hoses. Bring the screwdriver. 
and there's the pocket knife again. I'm gonna break my pocket knife. Okay, I'll address that in a second. I don't want to run down and grab another tool just yet. So, got a radiator shroud has to come off. Or not the fan shroud, or not the radiator shroud. Fun fact when you're. What the hell we got going on there, Bobby? I used a lag bolt and stuffed a couple nuts on it because the bolt was too long. Fancy. And that bottom one's smaller. And they got some different shit going on there. It's a little bit of a cob job. They just kind of threw whatever hardware they had at that thing at some point. Okay, I had to move the camera down off the cab roof because without them bars here to grab onto to get up there, it's getting a little sketchy getting up there to work it. So, but I got the fan shroud back. I got the low radiator hose off. Um, so all I got left is the hose for the overflow tank but i can't get to the clip on that until i get the top cover off so we got to get this off which it appears because they got uh these tapered bolts normally those are at least from what i've seen normally those are a pretty good indicator that they had a body clip there and apparently all the body kit all the body clips broke so they just nutted them but uh So, no big deal, just gotta get them bolts out of there. It should come free. This is not nearly as bad of a job as I initially pictured it being, to be honest. Other than I was not counting on having to support the hood. Oh, shit. Hmm. Wow. 
screwed up. I should have brought the little baby impact up with me. That would have made this job easier. Although as stuck as these are, I honestly don't know if it would have moved them. over backwards into the tire. That didn't feel that good. Okay, come out of there, you goofy bastard. I'm pretty sure that those are bolts meant for body clips. Okay, got the bolts out the other side, so this thing should just come off like so. And then there's a clip I gotta get off of that hose. gonna replace this hose. She's a little rough. Also, it's too big for the clamp. Come off of there, you bastard. It's moving. Place that hose because it just broke. Dandy, eh? Well, that makes my life easier because I can just pull that rest of that hose off with it out of the core. Although the weird part, I kind of got that thing. Let me set this back here in here real quick. Now, this has got me wondering if this is actually, I mean, it's obviously a C60 radiator, but I'm wondering if it's in the wrong year truck or something stupid. Let me, uh, let me come back around there and grab you and I can show you what I mean. This is kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm wondering if this is out of a truck that doesn't have the flip that doesn't have the flip hood they got they got this tube for the overflow coming out at this stupid angle and then it runs into the side of the course port and there's a cutout here that makes it look like it's supposed to come out like almost straight maybe i don't know it's odd well i got him working on it i might see if he could take that neck and turn it a couple degrees just to or maybe just make it come out straight and I'll take this thing and take this scallop and knock it, cut it out more. Or just leave it, I don't know. It's been that way forever and it's obviously working, so. Anyhow, I'm gonna go over there because it's easier. I got this wall in the way behind me over here. Yeah.
take them rubbers off because I don't want those getting screwed up. part is going to be figuring out how I'm going to stand in there to get that radiator lifted out. I don't think it's, yeah, it's a little stout. Yeah. So I can't stand down the core support now because it's not supported by deck squat. stuck in the rubber but it's a good copper radiator so it's going to be a little stout I mean, it ain't going to be super duper heavy but it ain't going to be super duper light neither but there's two matching rubber pieces down at the bottom and it is probably stuck in those so I might have to get a screwdriver and do a little bit of prying to get it popped loose from those guys on that side. And we're loose on that. Yeah, that radiator's a little stout. give her a whack but I have to go and list the help of dad to get this bastard out of here this is probably easier if you just pulled the hood off but there's no fun in that so I don't break anything. Probably better to just go see if Dad can come help me for a minute. Okay, I'll be back. Alright, we got her lifted out of there and had Dad help me close the hood while he was here because that's a little bit more of a one-man job now that there's really nothing to stabilize it. He tried to do it with the handles and everything you probably rip it off the front of the truck but uh, it was leaking up here somewhere and it's probably gonna end up being a recore or a little bit of calcium in there eh? either a recore or if there's a new radiator available it depends on if we, uh, I gotta dump the rest of the antifreeze out of there too. It depends on if the new radiator is a uh, Chinese hunk of shit. Because if it's just gonna be a piece of Chinese crap, I'm probably gonna tell them to put a new core in that one. That being said, the core is probably going to be Chinese too, so damned if you do, damned if you don't, but I'll just have to see what, see what he recommends either way. But while I'm at it, or while I got it apart this far, I'm going to put a water pump on it because there's it's not leaking, but we wiggled it and there's a little bit of bearing movement in there. And going to replace all the hoses. 
and basically just make sure the cooling system's all up to snuff and then get all that together and then i gotta figure out why the hell my blower motor quit working on me it's got a replacement blower motor in it that i put in it when we got it and it's a chinese hunk of shit so chances are blower motor very or chances are very good the blower motor could have taken a shit even though it's only well i guess it is I got, I bought this thing my freshman year of college. So that would have been shit. 2012. I either bought this. I think I bought this in the fall of 2012. Pretty sure I bought this in the fall of 12. Yeah, I did because I bought. I'm pretty sure I you because in 12 we had really good. It, obviously, 12 was a drought year, but we had just we had like the perfect amount of rain, and we had yields to beat the band, and crop prices went way up, and we just I. That was back when I was still farming with Matt and Ron, and we made we made out good that year. And I bought this, I bought the 7300, I bought all my hay equipment. I bought a lot of shit that year. But yeah, I got this in the fall of 12, so that blower motor's been in there since in the spring of 13, so I guess it's been in there a while, but you'd still, I mean, the original one made it from 1977 until 13, so. But anyway, I guess we'll see what other damage I can get done today. It's starting to slow down on the raining. We went from rain to mist. So as long as we don't get any more, I'll probably be back in the field by possibly Tuesday afternoon, definitely by Wednesday afternoon. So... Anyhow, I also got to get some brush chopping done. I'd like to get some brush chopping done either tomorrow afternoon or Tuesday afternoon, one of the two. Probably going to take that radiator down tomorrow afternoon, so it'll probably happen Tuesday afternoon. But Hell yeah, get after it, brother. That's got to be, that. that is the most annoying exhaust I've ever heard. Anyway, that's it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one.